Hi. Oh my goodness, we made it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm okay. so sorry. Island life. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on either. Okay, so um, you were on your phone. You want to? Can you turn it the other way or no? Yeah, much better. There we go. Hi. 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 I know. I've been in the rain. I'm all wet. It's, I'm soaking wet, but it's all good because I'm on an island. <laughs> yay, yay. Okay, so I'm going to click us on the Facebook. It goes live right away. Okay, so like, yes, nope, sir. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. All right. All right. Hello, hello, hello. I think we are live. Um, you guys, welcome to Tiffany Talks. I am so happy that you guys were make that transition over from YouTube to Facebook so that we can talk to the celebrity, amazing, most incredible person on the planet, Chef Crystal Blanchett. Welcome, Crystal. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Okay, so she is here from Belize, right? All the way from Belize. <laughs> well, let me just tell you guys a little bit about Chef Crystal, right? So we met, and not only is she an extraordinary coach, so you guys will know she was my actually my coach when I was doing the retreat in the middle of a pandemic. And I was like, Crystal, it's a pandemic. Like, I don't know if I can do it. She was like, Well, figure it out, right? You committed. I was like, What? So, like, so. <laughs> She is evidence of how powerful it is to have powerful people around you, helping you to elevate yourself to the next level. So she did that for me. And I'm so honored to have her on um, the show today. Not only is she an extraordinary chef, she's a mom of two. And she has this beautiful business where she is bringing healthy food to um, underprivileged communities. She has worked with some of the top celebrities of the world. Will Smith, for one, I'm like, hello, Will Smith, Ellen. Okay. She worked with my family. <laughs> favorite prince. She worked with Jessica Simpson, George Lucas. I mean, the list continues of the people who have like have been clamoring for her to come and be a chef in their home. Now, here's the thing, you guys. She's also going to teach a cooking class at the Fit Fierce and Fabulous live online retreat. Yay! You guys, I feel so blessed, so excited to have her to come and teach a cooking class. So we're opening up for questions right now. Um, I know when we were over on... Um, you two. We had Beth check in. She had a question. We had Ty check in. She had a question. So Crystal, I'll, I know I've been talking because I really want them to hear from you, but a couple of questions that they had as far as healthy okay. eating, because the theme is healthy eating for 2022, right? Do you yes. recommend going in like cold turkey on something or graduating into a certain, whether it's veganism, eating healthy, like reducing your carbs? What, what do you recommend in your experience? That's a beautiful question. Um, I honestly, like my experience, I believe that it's nice, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. You know, when you jump into something and it's, especially when it's something that you're not really used to, um, we tend to like, especially like start the new year out with a bang and we go out and we're like, this is going to happen. And I get to do this. And we have these expectations. And then when we don't hit them, we're really disappointed. So instead of, you know, causing this kind of like turmoil around food and going back to our old habits, what I suggest is that you literally like, you know, you kind of just ease into it. And a great way to do that is like, start with two days a week, especially like if you're going from say, you know, eating meat, you know, to becoming a vegetarian or a vegan, my suggestion is do two days a week, two days a week, no meat. And then as you gradually, you know, go through, give yourself like a deadline. So you say for the next six weeks, I'm going to do, you know, two days a week. And after six weeks, you add another day. And after, you know, another six weeks, you add another day. And then that's how you get to jump into it. Some people are great, you know, at saying like, I'm done and mm -hmm. I'm good. And I, I get to be, you know, in this routine. And for people like me who um, need a little extra support <laughs> in that, that space, I definitely like to give myself grace, but also realistic, you know, um, uh, realistic ideas on what gets to happen for myself because I know I know myself better than anyone. So those are my suggestions. Actually, I really love that. Like setting up, setting yourself up to win so that like, you know, cause I know when I did my vegan journey, I did a 30 day vegan journey. One of the things that was difficult for me was transitioning from old habits to new habits, right? So the way that you explained it yes. two days a week, 
you have two days of new habits, then you get to go back to your old habits, right? And then you gradually get to see what the difference is between the two, because a lot of what we do is just habit forming, right? And so like for me, it was Absolutely. like, what can I do with my eggs? I wanted eggs. Like, how am I going to get some eggs, right? You know, so if I could do two <laughs> days with no eggs and the other eggs, that's really, really feasible. So yeah, that's a really good advice. What is trending right now in the celebrity world? What are they eating? <laughs> what are they oh like? my gosh i mean everything's <laughs> always trending in this celebrity world everyone's eating something different um you know and i just pride myself on being available to whatever their needs are you know i try not to tell people what they should and shouldn't do mm-hmm. and um, i just coach through you know if this looks like for now you know you want to eat keto <laughs> you know then we jump into keto and i really do my best to provide, you know, um, a healthy keto balance. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I look to the experts, you know, I'm not an expert in keto cuisine and, um, I have, you know, personal trainers that I've worked with, or, um, I am a nutritionist, but my background obviously is not in, in keto cooking. Um, but I do have, um, some amazing experts that I work with that support me with that. And, and it's really just doing my research and, and knowing that it's okay, that I'm not perfect at those things and, and going through that journey with whatever celebrity or athlete that I'm working with at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, it's really just about them and, and whatever they feel is going to be, you know, support them through a movie or, on tour or, you know, through a game and whatnot. That's, that's really what I, what I get to do. So. I love it. You know, that you said like, you don't have to, you don't have to be, some people feel like when you're in a field that you have to be an expert on everything, right? You don't, you get to have support, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to food, you know, I started, when I started out, there were no like chefs and nutritionists at that time. Like I was one of, <clears throat> excuse me, the only in my particular field. And then it just became this like trend of like, I'm a chef and I'm a nutritionist. And what exactly does that mean? You know? And so, because there's a lot of chefs that only, you know, if you're a vegan chef, you only do vegan, you know, or if I'm this chef, I only do this. And for me, it's like, it's not, that's not feasible, you know, it's because everybody has an idea of what's great for them and what's mm-hmm. special for them. So it's really about being flexible mm-hmm. and supporting people through that journey, because if something like keto doesn't work for them, then you have to know, you have to be able to step in and say, okay, that's not working. So what else can we do? What else can we try? We don't want to give up on the keto. Right. So what else, you know, can we do to support you through whatever you felt like this journey was going to be? And that's, that's really what I try to do is, is make sure that I don't just allow someone to quit. Um, but I also am supportive if something is not working, like we shift and readjust as needed. Mm. You know, I, I read a quote the other day about confidence because the way that you eat is really about building confidence in this new, this new lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? So whether it's yes. for me, like veganism, I'm leaning towards, um, well, I'm a pescatarian right now, but I'm mm-hmm playing with the idea of whether I'm going to go vegan um, and some people are doing keto, whatever it is, right? You get to build confidence in that new way of being, that new way of living, right? And the way that you do that, what you said is like, you build confidence when you move forward right at that point when you feel like you're going to quit, right? So when you feel like you're going to quit, right? And if you have someone like you on board, right? Or a coach or a chef and trade, whatever, that's saying, listen, we don't have to quit. Let's try this. How do we move forward on being successful? So I love it that you're so, that's why you're so sought after flexibility, right? (laughs) Everybody wants to work with her, you guys. She's absolutely (laughs) like the top echelon. Oh, thank you. And everybody wants to work with her because of that flexibility. And not only that, her coaching. And then she's like, she keeps it neutral, no judgment around what you eat because whatever absolutely, you, yeah, whatever you eat right. gets work for your body. Uh huh. Well, well I think it's you know we often like for some people the word grace, right? Right? Grace can either mean that you give yourself grace if you you mess up and da da, and so there's kind of this like leisurely way of thinking about it. And then there's the way that I look at grace is like yes, we get to have forgiveness and stretch ourselves. But there's also like one of my favorite people, David Goggins, who's like yeah. nutty. But what I love about him is that it's like, okay, get back up and do it again. Get back yeah. up and do it again. Get back up and do it again. And it doesn't mean I'm not necessarily like the hard, like, ah, you know, but it's more so like, 
that's where the grace piece comes in as well, because it's like, you get to get back up and do it again. And you do it until it feels right for you because what fits for you doesn't necessarily fit for everyone. And that's the thing about food, right? Is that I was a vegan for many years and it didn't, it didn't work for me in that moment. You know, I didn't understand it. I didn't, I really like was, it was at a time where it was like really trending, (laughs) um, in the nineties and and early two thousands. And so, um, I, my refrigerator was kind of like full of Red Bull and like, like little (laughs) snacks, but it like, wasn't anything, you know, I was young and, and I didn't understand it. And especially as a chef at that time, I wasn't cooking vegan food. So, um, during that time, so I really didn't understand it. And I, and I was able to study it and, and learn from amazing, amazing you know, um, vegan chefs and it wasn't necessarily like vegan substitution. There's a lot of substitution out there right now that carry a lot of processed, you know, there's salt, high in salt, um, high in fat, things like that. And so it's not necessarily good for your body. So what you want to do is you make sure that you do your research. It's so important. And again, there's so many people that are knowledgeable that know, you know, how to do these things. And, and it's okay, like you said, to get support through it, and yeah. give yourself grace and knowing that you're not an expert and you'll have to be an expert. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's why I called you in because, you know, I do the fitness speech. I am not a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. I am not a chef. And like, when I want to provide this experience of the retreat, I want to give, you know, because what I did realize is that when you actually do something, like you, you cook something and you build a relationship mm-hmm. with the food, it's a lot easier to go on and eat healthier to prepare those meals again once you've actually done it. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Uh-huh. That's, that's where a lot of my athletes that I work with, they're, re- they're young athletes. And what we do is we try to encourage them to cook for themselves, right? So yeah. even though some of them, we provide private chefs and things like that for them, but it's really knowing what you're putting into your body. Like if you look at people like Tom Brady, Tom Brady is Tom Brady yeah. because he knows what's going into his body. He has great people. He has a whole team of people that work with him and support him through that process. But he also knows, you know, and yeah. I think that's the step like that we skip over, you know, is that there are these experts that are able to support you and you want to make sure you know what they're telling you is right. It's just like your money. You know, when you have a financial advisor, (laughs) yes, they're running your money, but you also need to know, you know, what's going on with your money. So it's the same thing with food. Yeah. And having a relationship with the food, like making, like for me, I like everything to be like fast. So if I can do it fast, like I definitely want to do a chia seed pudding when we cook, like stuff like that you put in and have it for breakfast. And so, and even Tom, I realized that he was vegan. The reason why I started experimenting with it is because there's a lot of athletes that have been in the game for a long time. Like myself, Mm -hmm. I was actually saying, I've been teaching for 36 years. This is insane. Mm -hmm. Like I know I was only (laughs) one when I started, but okay, for a very long time. Exactly fitness industry and you know it's it's important to get support and to see how your body is changing and things like that and what works as you're as you mature right so i'm looking towards absolutely for that to see if it really helps with athleticism right may or may not work you you know get to Mm -hmm. try it out with support with support so um, absolutely you said the trending for the celebrities depending on what they want right and um for you what is your favorite type of food to cook Oh my gosh. That's such a difficult question. And I get asked that all the time, right? I just love food. I'm such a lover of food, but I, I really enjoy it. Like I could eat, you know, a poached egg with like beans and rice. That's like my, you know, or even just beans. Um, I just really enjoy simple foods, but I also, I love having people cook for me too. So, Uh, you know, having those opportunities to eat out or things like that, I really cherish because it's not, it's not something that I do often. Uh Um, so when I do, I just, I love to, um, to explore. Yeah. You're a chef. You have to. (laughs) So I I was also reading your bio, how you really like to, uh, lean in towards whole food eating, which I definitely in alignment with. Can you talk about that? Like a difference between whole food versus like, you know, I know with the veganism, there's a lot of, I just discovered like these little vegan sausages and I've, I got to get off of those because I'm like, what is this? I'm like, I don't want to know right now. But anyway, so like whole food eating versus yes. processed food. <laughs> I love it. So even with the whole food eating, like we tend to like pair things up, right? So this is the best way I, I choose to explain it. So when we eat an apple, right, it's like we have an apple and then it's like we cut it up and it's like, okay, I'm going to have an apple and we eat it with some peanut butter or we eat it with some of this or we eat it with some of that as opposed to just like the whole food, right? The whole fruit, like just enjoying the fruit as it is. We are so used to adding, 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 adding to change the flavor of things. So we don't even know what it tastes like, you know? So, so being able to just simply like just eat things simply, um, it's hard for us because we're not used to it. 
you know, and yeah. sauces. We love sauces. Like in America, we love a good sauce, you know? And so my thing is, is that creating things from scratch and just really ch- changing your palate to simplify it so that foods um, are not just about, like we say, like we need more spices or we need, you know, ketchup or we need mustard or we need this. It's because we've trained our, our palates to take on other things, other ingredients, as opposed to the natural ingredients that we could be getting by just fresh herbs. You know, for instance, on a piece of fish or a piece of tofu or, you know, whatever you're eating, your protein that you're eating, even beans, just adding herbs to that, as opposed to all of this salt and things like that to change the, the, the flavor content of the food, it's not whole eating. And we really get to stick with basic, basic eating, having, you know, an orange as opposed to orange juice. I mean, just those little shifts and things like that um, can really create um, better balance in your life. And we don't even think about just like a cup of, a cup of watermelon juice. I want to say is like, I think it's like 200 calories. I I can't, don't quote me on that, but it's really, really high. um, For those of you that are, that count calories. Um, and so just thinking about the difference between that and it, just a piece of watermelon. Yes. And which you is know? More, more fulfilling, right? With the crunch, Exactly. Like, and the Absolutely. And exactly. But yeah. we don't think about that because again, it's like, oh, I'll just grab this watermelon juice. It's simple. It's easy. It tastes so good, you know, um, but there's so much sugar in it. And, um, and again, not, not bad nor good, but it's just being aware of those things, you know, and again, the whole foods and, and I like to think of them as wholesome, right? It's like before we add anything to it and taint it. You know, what I really love that you said is that training our palate to get used to the thing. It's not only our palate, it's our mindset. Like if, if you have an mm-hmm. apple, even though an apple, like it's one of the best things that you can eat, especially like before bedtime, because of such high fiber and things like that. If you just have an apple, right? We feel like we're not eating. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's a snack. Right? Like it's not like a meal. It's like, exactly. what else goes with the apple? Like, you know, it like- It turns into, else? yes. You know, so like we, we have to have like a sandwich and chips. Exactly. It always has something else to go with it, right? Always something to go with it. That, yeah. <laughs> that just like, what's the thing that I'm eating and being in relationship with it? Because like, that's why I really love fruit. Because if you, if you think about that apple, like it's number one, you can hold it, it's hearty right? Yes. It's, it's got a, it's got a bite. So it's got like, like the tension. Mm-hmm. It's got the softness. It's got the juice. It's got everything yes. in it right there in the apple, but we want to put stuff on it like all the way. Oh, absolutely. Pie, right. So where does that Absolutely. Well, it's like, I got it. You lose in your mind. You're like, I have to add a little protein. I have yeah. to add this. And I had to, it's like, just eat the apple, right. <laughs> you know, but, but again, it's the, it's the overcomplicating of things and, and, and understanding that excuse me, that even when you, so for instance, when you're on the go and you're constantly going, having an apple, a banana, an orange, you can carry that with you. You can always have that. So it's that easier snack when you need to grab something really quick, Mm -hmm. um, that sits, you know, and depending on where you live, bananas in California is a little difficult. It gets a little mushy sometimes sitting in the car, but, but, or Arizona, you know, or Texas maybe, but, but for the most part, having those fruits, those whole fruits, um, as a snack, it's so simple and easy and it's healthier than grabbing a bag of chips. Or if you're on the road and you're like, I'm starving and you know, you want to stop at some fast food restaurant because you don't have snacks in the car. So I definitely use whole fruits in the car constantly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, okay. So I want to talk just before we close out about, I know you're doing some amazing work, some things coming up with you. Community. Can you talk about that? How you bring your healthy food? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. So I am, um, I created a company, um, with my business partners called inner city kitchen and inner city kitchen is near and dear to my heart because we started years and years ago. Um, it was a food and nutrition company that I had, um, where I was working with different YMCAs throughout the city of Los Angeles. And it's kind of grown into this beautiful space where we are creating an actual food hall within the inner city. And, um, we've really gotten connected with, um, just with our, our local community and, um, you know, saying to them, like, what did it, what is it, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? And not thinking that we can assume what people need in their, in our, in our community. Right. So, so what we've done, um, is just really been able to explore our options and we have, um, we're in the process of purchasing a, purchasing a building in Los Angeles and we're working. The plan is to shift through Los Angeles, 
um, Minneapolis, Chicago, um, St. Louis, all over the world, pretty much. But we're starting within the U.S. and working our way from Los Angeles all the way through the Midwest to the South and creating these food halls where people can go and it's their local foods that they're used to, the restaurants that they're used to. And we're being supported by our um, local universities in creating nutrition courses for some of these restaurateurs so that they're able to come in and shift their menus to um, also have healthy cuisine on their on their menu. So again, it's it's familiar to the community. We're doing that, you know, 50-50 split where we're not just throwing things down people's throats, where we're actually incorporating healthy foods and um, and so they can enjoy something healthy while they're out. Okay, so let me just make sure I understood that. So you're going yes. like, like it's called Inner City Kitchen, and then you're, yes. you're working with the community to find out, which I love this because a lot of people are like, the communities need this. Nobody ever asks the community exactly. to find out what they need. And then you're working with restaurants to come in and sort of curate a healthy option on the menu. Is that what you're so they're re- So basically the restaurants will come in and they have their own little food stall and they have a little tiny pop-up restaurant at this food stall and they're able to provide their local foods, things that they've been feeding the community for years with also having healthy options on the menu as well. So giving people an opportunity to taste new things from their favorite restaurants. I love that. So is that something that you'll do like once a month or like every day? Or- no, so it'll be every day. So it'll be something every day. Um, and um, like I said, throughout the US, that's the plan. And um, our local restaurants, you know, some of the favorite res- favorite restaurants for our communities, we're asking them, you know, who would they like to see within this space? And then we'll rotate them out. Um, and um, it's really great. It's kind of like a food truck station, you could ah, say. Yeah, I so. love that. Food, food trucks. I live in Austin, you guys. It's like the food truck capital of the world. Oh, right? yes. And you have, they have really good food at the food truck. They have right? great food. So many different things, right? So okay, Exactly. So- the last thing I want to talk to you about, I know that you, because listen, you guys, I told you she's amazing. She's amazing. So she has a celebrity chef who's working in the city. Now you work with pro athletes. So just yes. can you talk about that a little bit because I know yes. that you're working with the pro athletes to eat healthy. Yes. Like, uh-huh. Absolutely. So we're working right now um, with this, uh, um, we started a company with my business partners called Sports Nutrition Lab. And Sports Nutrition Lab is really become just near and dear to my heart because We were, those of us, my partner, business partner, Tabitha, and I've worked with athletes before, and it was really difficult for us to try to shift the mindset of like, this is what you need to eat so that you're, 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 you're faster, you're, you know, um, your endurance, you're making sure that you sleep all of these things. And so we've created this program where we work with other experts. We've got an amazing hypnotherapist, yoga instructors, um, coaches, life coaches, like, you know, health enthusiasts that actually are able to support the athlete. So we're working, my business partner and I do the food aspect, but it's really just an overall balance of how you get to work through and create the body that you want from beginning to end. So we've got young athletes from, you know, age of 17 that are professional baseball players that get to be supported while they're, you know, in spring training and knowing how to eat while they're on the road, things like that. So it's just an, an amazing, it's been an amazing process. And I'm so grateful um, for those that have come in and support us, the athletes that have supported us in creating this platform. So we've got a platform that is online for the younger guys that are um, just looking to really learn themselves how to do things. And we do, we have a food delivery service as well to them. We ship food all over the country. And then we also have um, a pro package that is for our specifically for the pro athletes that are like, I need a chef. I need someone, you know, with me 24 hours. I need, you know, the hands on coaching um, with life coaches and things like that. So we have those options for them and it's really, really great. And I'm really, really proud of it. Yes, that sounds amazing. Because, you know, yeah. when you're young, I'm like, like I said, I've been in the fitness industry for 36 years. I have seen every <laughs> trend and I have been coaching and teaching yeah. consistently. And I notice a difference from like how my mindset was when I was younger, like in my teens and 20s till now. So when you're in your teens and 20s, you're so invincible. You're like, I can eat whatever. And oh, I'm yes. Like a badass, right? So learning how to eat and and nourish your body in a way that to maximize your athleticism at that time is going to be instrumental in the longevity of your success. 
So I have absolutely for like thank you. All right. Thank you. I love her. Don't you love her? (laughs) Thank you, Crystal, for being on the show. Um I don't know if I can see any questions right now because we shifted over, but you guys can type them in the chat and maybe she'll have a look. I'll have a look and we can answer absolutely have, right? Um, so um just a little uh recap, right? Just of everything that we talked about today. Um, if you are transitioning into any new way of living or eating, you know, Chef Crystal recommends that you do it like in a way that it, it you give yourself grace, like maybe doing two days a week, every week for six weeks and then up at this to three days. I love that plan, right? Um, also, like if you are want to be involved, what if somebody wants to be involved with your um yeah, I was gonna say whether people whether people want to be involved or they just want some helpful tips, like feel free, reach me on okay. Instagram at Chef Crystal's World. I'm okay. there. I'm here to support and help and and um in any way I can. And we definitely love feedback and um support within the community. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, so Chef, can it's Chef Crystal's World on Instagram? Can you spell that, please? Because I can't. C H E F C R Y S T A L Z W O R L D. Chef Crystal's World. Okay, so first of all, you guys, go over, follow her. Next, if you really want to experience her, sign up for the Fit, Fears, and Fabulous live online retreat, which is going to be a total immersion into mind, body, and spirit elevation for 2022. 2022 is being dedicated to the best version of you, you guys. And so we're going to be cooking. We're going to leave back all of our garbage from 2021, move forward towards our vision in 2022, move healthily and happily into our bodies, loving and accepting ourselves along this journey and we get to cook with chef crystal so um uh, actually, you guys sign up we'll put the links below uh to her instagram to the fifth years of fabulous retreat and if you want to be involved with anything please leave a message um and yeah that's it so thank you so much crystal. thanks Tim. i love you love right, you guys. thank you everyone he's on vacation and believe i'm on vacation me. yeah we're gonna cut out all right queen we'll see you guys see you later now last time i never was able to end this call so let me make sure I can end the call and we will not be live for like two hours later. All right. Okay. So, all right. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.